That's right, in Lies of P, you can possess the true powers of Molnir, aka Thor's hammer, and let me tell you, if you're struggling with the late game, much like I did during my first playthrough, once picking up this weapon, upgrading it to its maximum, and bonking our enemies' heads with it, it truly turned the game into easy mode. So, we're going to look at how to obtain this weapon and turn it into an absolute beast, dealing thousands of damage in mere seconds. Of course, if you're excited and you happen to like this video, make sure you hit that like button down below, it's the quickest way of telling me that you enjoy this content and you want to see more Lies of P videos because this is in fact my first ever Lies of P video and I'm sure I'll be covering more in the future so if you're into that and want to stick around and be notified whenever a new video comes out do hit the subscribe button down below as well but anyway the reason why you're here how do we get Molnir and possess the true powers of Thor himself well the weapon itself is actually located in the Krat central station lobby but unfortunately it's not during the first chapter when you actually first experience this area it's actually in the ninth chapter of the game so fairly late on and start experiencing Krat again for the second time round, you'll naturally progress to the Krat Central Station Lobby Stargazer, which is the second checkpoint, if you will, in Chapter 9. And then if you just head straight out of the double doors into the courtyard, there will be multiple enemies. If we keep hanging a bit left, there will be a red box, which I've already opened in the gameplay that you're seeing, but there will be a box for you to open and the large hammer resembling Molnir will be inside. Now, of course, I know that this is fairly late on in the game so you're going to have progressed through about 75% of it 70% of it before even having access to this weapon but I also feel from this point onwards all of the enemies and the amount of mini bosses that you experience ramp up dramatically you typically really only see about one or two mini bosses per sort of checkpoint sometimes none at all with all of the previous areas that you explore beforehand whereas going forward from this without spoiling too much you are going to see a larger amount of mini bosses and just larger enemies being like in place of the generic enemies throughout the rest of the game. So if you're anything like me and you're struggling to get through the last couple of chapters in the game on your first playthrough, definitely think about getting this weapon because it's going to help out tremendously. The weapon itself is called the Coil Molnir, so obviously just making fact of that it's a battery powered electric weapon rather than something given by the gods. And it's also a weapon for motivity builds or those of you focusing in the motivity stat. Obviously with it being a large weapon, it's probably given that you're going to need a large amount of strength to use it but what you can do and what I did for this weapon personally was upgrade it obviously as much as I can and it is a plus 10 in the gameplay you're seeing in the background but the unique thing that you can also do in Lies of P is change how your stats affect your weapons and to do that all you need to do is speak to the weaponsmith in Hotel Krat and alter the handle on the weapon. What we are going to look to do is put the motivity crank on this to make it an A grade scaling in motivity because then purely for damage output all we need to be worrying about is motivity and then because of that it makes it an extremely powerful weapon obviously if you continue to scale that particular stat and then of course just talking on stats I'll just throw mine up on the screen for what I had at the end of the game because unfortunately I pretty much lost most of the footage whilst using this weapon so I couldn't actually throw up the stats on screen for what I had for particular fights obviously in this case we're heavily around motivity which is why what you're seeing on screen is 40 motivity 30 capacity and 33 vitality. This of course is at the end of my game. I have completed it in terms of beating the final boss. So actually when you get Molnir for yourself, you're probably going to be around about the level 60, 65, possibly more if you have explored everything that the game has to offer until that point. So what I would say is possibly have maybe 30 motivity and then possibly capacity at 25 and vitality at 25 because essentially we just need to focus on the damage output with motivity whilst also increasing our carrying capacity to make sure that we stay around about the 50% equip load or lower to ensure that we have at least somewhat decent stamina regeneration and movement speed when using this weapon and the amulets that we're going to discuss in a moment and then of course vitality just giving us more health to obviously survive a bit easier in our fights. Capacity also increases the amount of uses you have with your legion arm so that's another benefit of increasing your capacity and also stamina isn't too much of an issue which is why there's not really many points into vigor because the game has a nice natural regen of stamina where even if you use a heavy attack to fully deplete your stamina the game will start regenerating your stamina whilst you are finishing that attack to either choose to carry on with the combo or dash 
out if that's something that you want to do to an evade an attack. So I never really found a problem with having low stamina in the game. It's something that I never really felt I needed to increase. And for those of you wondering what Legion arm I was using, I pretty much used this throughout the whole game. It was the Full Minis, Full Minis, Full Minis, however you pronounce it, essentially the Electric Bolt Legion arm, which when fully upgraded does a thousand plus damage with the final charge of the Electric Pulse, whilst also dealing constant damage over time whilst you're charging it. It is extremely useful and after two uses will electrify your enemies, meaning that they take more damage. So that's also one that I can highly suggest if you're looking to keep with the electric theme of this build. And then of course, as I mentioned earlier, we also have the high capacity for the amulets that we're using. And I'd say the most important ones that you can be using, especially early game as well, ones that you pick up fairly early on, are things like the carrier's amulet that's obviously going to help you with your equipment load. Again, helping you keep around that 50% equipment load whilst using this weapon. And as you're progressing through the games, getting all the different defense parts, which start obviously accumulating to your equipment load. That's obviously a very neat one to have. I was also using the life amulet as well. That's one that you can pick up fairly early on just increasing your maximum health is always very nice and handy to have and then essentially anything else that's going to help with your damage output so i was running at times the puppet destroyers amulet the assassins amulet and just anything that's going to help with my physical damage output i was obviously chopping and changing them throughout the game depending on the enemies that i'm coming up against so essentially you want one that's going to be supportive helping with the carrying capacity if you can maybe one that's going to help out with stamina or health anything like that that you're probably lacking on with the stats that you've got in your build and then one that's going to help you out with your damage output and then if you've got four amulets slots and you're nearing the end of the game you can maybe add on the blue guardianship amulet which is essentially like the ring of favor in dark souls where it increases your hp stamina and also the amount that you have in your legion arm and then as you can probably tell we've got an extremely well-rounded build with high damage output really good protection with medium to high stamina hp and legion arm uses and then obviously just going back to the weapon itself it has one of the most unique fable arts in the entire game the aggressive fable art Thunderstrike obviously does as you can imagine being Thor's hammer calling the lightning from the skies and slamming it down upon your enemies heads dealing catastrophic damage but also still maintaining that electric presence after using it so it still has the electric blitz applied to the hammer for the next 15 seconds or so allowing you to hit your enemies with that electrified power essentially building up that electric blitz and obviously once you fully build that up they will then become more susceptible to your attacks taking even more damage than what they were taking already. It also breaks enemy stance as if they were nothing almost every time leaving it where they're open to a fatal attack so it's really good at obviously building up that electric charge, hitting them, stunning them, leaving them vulnerable and just allows you to follow it up and just deal catastrophic damage to anything that stands in your way. But not only is it one of the most damaging weapons that exists in the game it's also got a high amount of protection especially with its protective fable art, the absolute defense. This is also on other other weapons in the game essentially what this does is it increases your window for a perfect block so normally where you would be fighting enemies you have to sort of hit that split second decision where you block at the time that they're about to strike you to hit that perfect guard this fable art increases that window for about three seconds so essentially if you see that your enemy is lining up for an attack if you hold lb and y instead you are always guaranteed to do a perfect guard this only takes up one bar of your fable whereas the offensive attack with Thunderstrike does in fact take up three of your Fable Art slots. So if you've only got three, you do need to charge up all three before you can use that Electric Strike, but it's obviously worth it with the amount of damage that it does and the continuous damage that you can do with it afterwards as well. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this weapon pretty much carried me throughout the rest of the game ever since I picked it up. Just for reference, in the early game I was using the Great Sword of Fate, which is the starter weapon that you get for choosing the stronger class at the very beginning, but then I quickly moved out into the Holy Sword of the Ark, which is a boss weapon, again being another great sword, but even that started to whittle away and not be as good as Mjolnir in the later stages of the game. So I do highly recommend getting this weapon. Obviously, if you're a fan of Marvel and 4, etc., it's really cool to be using this weapon, and it truly does possess the powers that you hope it does, being a replica of Force Hammer. So if you are struggling with the later stages of the game, or you're up to this point, or about to get to this point in the game, I highly recommend getting it because it is so much fun to use 
and just makes the game essentially easy mode for you. But essentially, that is everything that I need to discuss with you guys. Obviously, with the defensive parts, I would say just run whichever best ones that you can. You will obviously naturally get better defensive parts as you progress through the game, but that's why capacity and maybe the carrier amulet is also very good to have because they do start to weigh quite a bit as you get to the late game. So keeping an eye on your capacity is always good, especially for that stamina region, as I mentioned as well. But essentially, just have a nice balance of a good health bar that you can maintain and then put the rest into motivity and you're basically good to go. I really do hope that you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, if you wouldn't mind hitting that like button down below just to show that you did, that'll be greatly appreciated and it also lets me know that you want to see more Lies of P content just like this. And then of course if you are new and you've made it to the very end, thank you once again for that and if you want to stay up to date with all of the later videos that are going to be released on the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It's free to do, you can always change your mind in the future as well so why not give it a go. But for now, like I say, that's everything from me guys so thank you very much for watching go have an absolute blast with this weapon and let me know how you get on but for now i guess i will catch you lot in the next video of whatever it is that we make bye bye